Good morning, old Audubon. It is wonderful to see you this day. This is truly the day the Lord has made. We do rejoice and are happy and excited and glad in it. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are still with us, God. No matter the trials, the tribulations, the uncertainties, there is a certainty in you, God. God, we thank you that you give us mustard seed, ordinary faith, that with that ordinary faith, we can always do extraordinary things. We thank you, God, that you are with us always, that you continue to lead us and guide us and be with us today. God, as we're entering the middle of June, we thank you, God, for the rain that waters us, for the soil that feeds us, and for time that allows us to grow. We thank you, God, that in all of these things, you are present. And we praise you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Jesus, Jesus is an excellent teacher. We often think of God as being very high and lifted up, mysterious in all God's ways. The creator God who has formed the heavens and the earth. But God understood and understands that we are fallible humans that have boundaries. And our boundaries are often bounded by what we know and what we experience. But there are people who think outside the box. Those are the people who are called dreamers like Joseph, like a lot of you. It is the dreamers who have invented all of the things in the world. It is the dreamers that are giving the gifts of God like we all have, but are able to reach down into the soil of their being to make those dreams become a reality. In our scripture today, we find Jesus trying to describe the kingdom of God once again. He's trying to describe it to people who really only know their world. Most of them have not been outside of the boundaries of their world. He understood that the Jewish culture and Jewish people were agricultural in nature. So a lot of his examples came from agriculture. In fact, most of us, even if we can't grow anything, understand somewhat how to grow things. I would say even those people who can kill a cactus understand what it is and what plants need to grow. Understand that Jesus understood that enough that he gave us this wonderful example today of seeds. He told us that what seeds need to grow is time is soil, water, and time. Soil is the foundation of everything that has ever been produced. Now, I understand that right now we can grow things hydroponically, which means we can grow, grow it with just so, with just water and fertilizer. But initially, it had to come from somewhere. And even when it is reproduced, those things that grow, grew with uh, air and water still need something to start with. Our, in our soil, there are nutrients that enable every living thing to grow. Plants put down roots and tendrils where the nutrients are are digested, let's say, from the soil and are absorbed to create more and more cells that then dupl duplicate and grow. Not every soil is the same. Some, oil, some soils are acidic, meaning their pH is very, very, very low. 
Um, and some soils are basic, which means their pH is high. Um, and, and excuse me if I have it backwards, but you know what I mean in terms of being, one is having very, very acidy and one being very, very basic. And then there are soils that are very densely packed together. And then there's soil that's sandy and loose like, sa like sand in the seashore. We have to realize that the, the type of soils that, that exist determine what plants can grow in that soil. As a child of God, our foundation is God as a soil. Our soil may be nutrient rich. We have been, may have been fed by good things in our lives. Sometimes our soils are not, and we just barely survive. Some of us have had supportive families who nurtured us and affirmed us. Others of us, us have had families that didn't even know that he existed, or if they did, didn't give us the support we needed to thrive. Some have had security, safety, and in our environment. Some of us have to duck bullets just to survive. Our soil is what has fed us as children. But recognize this, soils are always external to us. It is what feeds us and is what allows us to grow. Our soil may be very acidic People may have criticized you all of your life and said to you, you could never do anything right. Or they may have been smooth and so affirming that you didn't grow enough because people did other things for you. Our soul may be uh, an environment that is so packed with worries and concerns that we weren't able to grow and sprout. Or our soil may be so uh, far apart that as we're growing, we had to find our own affirmations. Our soil does contribute to who we are. Our soil is also our ancestry, our culture. It is our friends. It is our family. The soil is necessary to help us grow. Recognize that as we're talking. The second thing that Jesus talks about is water. Because we live and we are humans, everything that we have needs water. The amount of water that a seed needs and a seed has determines how fast or slow that it can grow or even how taller it can grow. Every cell that is alive in, in our lives, every animal, every plant needs water to grow. For us, water is the key to life. Water is refreshing. It allows us to take the nutrients from the soil, soils, be dissolved, and be absorbed into the roots and plants and tem tendrils. Water for us as humans, represents the spirit that is inside each of us. Water, excuse me, reps, rep, represents what we need to grow and, and fur, flourish. Some of us need a lot of water. We need a lot of, of the spirit in us. Some need not as much because they can take a little bit and make a lot. All, however, still need water. And the last is time. Time is something that God has created for us. We can't rush time, neither can we slow it down. We can only measure time. Our time as human is measured by the rotation of our planet around the sun, not the watch that we wear in our arm. It is more significant than we know because every living creature measures time 
in their own way. We track time not because we want to, but because we need that need to. That determines how well and how fast or how slowly we grow. Now, I've talked about soil and water and time, but I've not talked about the most important thing, the seed itself. We are the seed. All plants begin with the seed. Whether you know it or not, the seed is a, need, is a means of replicating the plant. All seeds are just tiny plants. Because of our silent science, we have created seedless plants. However, to duplicate or reproduce, plants need something in order to reproduce. It may have come from initial seed that was then scientifically grown to be seedless, but we all needed that seed to grow. We are God's seed. We are the replication of God in this world. We carry in us all of God's essence inside. Expect, expressed differently, it's true, but from God nonetheless. Now I took this time to give an introductory horticultural lesson because it's a simple lesson expressing God's idea of his kingdom. God started with this soil in which the seed, which is us, is, is growing. Jesus said that the seed is cast at night in the scripture but it sprouts and grows by itself, first breaking through the soil, and then the head, and then the whole stalk in which is the ability to reproduce. Jesus is telling us that we are like seeds. We are planted in an environment. In the environment that we have is everything we need to grow, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it. When we are young, we grow quietly, but steadily. Depending upon the soil that we have, we break through as we learn who we are. As we mature, we begin to reproduce in our environment and eventually we reproduce ourselves. We reproduce in our acts, in our behavior. We produce in our uh, things that we create and eventually we produce children. When we are mature, a ripened grain will reproduce more of itself. We don't have control over our environment as children. We don't have the ability of, to say who birthed us, who was our mom, who was our dad. When we were children, we didn't have the ability to, to determine where we would grow up. We cannot create ourselves, but God gives you enough of a soil and an environment that at some point we can push beyond the place and the boundaries in where we're grown and grow up straight and strong. We still have soil, water, and time. Jesus tells us that no matter what soil in which you were grown, the water of the Holy Spirit allows you to grow and produce. Once you have grown beyond your original boundaries or soil, you get a chance to make choices that can enrich your environment and help you grow stronger. As you mature, you have an opportunity to create success by creating a successor, living a life that is worthy to be duplicated. God's chilled kingdom is like that. The second part of this scripture, it talks about a mustard seed. The first seeds were seeds that were soil, that were, I'm sorry, that were everyday grain, that feed, fed many people. 
but the second illustration was a mustard seed. He states that the mustard seed is small, but once it is grown, it turns into a mighty tree. So the seed, though it was very small, has already in it the ability to be a mighty tree. When we look at these two examples, these two parables, an ordinary seed, a grain seed, and a mustard seed, a tiny seed, we can find ourselves mirrored there, somewhere between. We are, some of us, ordinary people. We aren't destined to be some great, ordinary, extraordinary leader. But when we lead our ordinary lives with the faith that gives us, we have the ability to change the entire world into God's kingdom. We become like that seed of grain that multiplies and grows and can cover and feed the entire world just by a grain of seed, by being who you are as a child, by growing up in God's kingdom. But then some people in this world are mustard seeds. You're tiny. You look like you're inconsequential. You look like you're nobody special, but inside of you is the ability to be mighty. The potential is there. Some of your seeds fell on what rocky soil and you had a rough time in life, but you had the ability to push past those rocky soil and grow tall. Some of you uh, have very sandy soil, not many nutrients, not many people affirmed you, not many people told you who you would be and you would be okay. But God would always give you enough and enough affirmation to push beyond even your circumstances. Sometimes you fell on looks like lots and lots of nutrients but around you are weeds and the weeds try to choke the life out of you. They tried everything that you wanted to do. They said you couldn't or they jumped on your bandwagon and tried to steal your joy. But in all of that, God gives you good soil in your life when you get a chance to reach out to God's soil. Jesus understood our humanity and that none of us are born grown. We come out of an environment, some great, some not so great, some supported, others just barely able to survive. But God says that he knows the plans that he has for us, plans to prosper us and give us good success. Our job, beloved children of God, is to take the soil in which you are, you find yourself and bloom where you are planted. Yet do not be afraid to be transplanted where you are because the soil that you're in is hostile. hostile. Do not be afraid to be carried by the wind because your nature is such that you must reproduce. You may need different soil. Do not be afraid to be a late bloomer because it takes more time for others to bloom, some to bloom than others. Take the soil, take the water, and take the time to become fully mature so that you may reproduce. And I don't necessarily mean children, but your gifts and talents. You compose the kingdom of God. Whether you are ordinary or extraordinary, it takes both to populate God's kingdom. Don't be afraid of starting small because you are the gift, you are the seed, and the world is waiting for your future and your faith. Be blessed, beloved children of God and have a wonderful life. Amen and amen.